Hello everybody and welcome to another video. Last week we talked about the mechanical description of the transfer case and that was a very long video and I'm hoping this video is much shorter. We are just going to be talking about the lubrication, the controls, and the pump that I need to develop for the transfer case to make it work. So we're gonna jump right into it. I have PowerPoint open with a diagram showing everything. The reason we are covering this is because I showed you how it physically worked last week and I'm gonna show you how all the controls in the system work this week and then you're not gonna see this for a while because I'm gonna be spending a couple months developing it and finding all the right parts and all that kind of stuff. So we're gonna jump right into it, what I need to do and what I'll be doing in the background for a couple months while I design this case. So we have the diagram popped up. We have the transfer case in the middle. Um, and then I have a bunch of arrows pointing in all kinds of different directions. Um, so we'll start off with the blue, green, and red. And I have those listed over here on the side. The blue is the lubrication slash control path for the clutch that controls the two wheel and four wheel drive. The red is the lubrication and control path for the high gear, and the green is the lubrication and control path for the low gear. The purple is the return feed for the pump, and then the orange is the main feed that goes from the pump to the control block. So that is basically a very simple rundown of what all the parts are. What I need to do is I need to develop a system that will scavenge ATF fluid out of the bottom of the transfer case and feed it back into the control block and go through the right valves to be able to control the correct clutch pack. One thing I don't know right now is if there are lubrication passages that just kind of mist or spray or apply lubrication in certain areas. So I'll look at the old transfer case housing and see if there's any ports that just feed lubrication to areas that need it. Like one of the things I know that needs it is going to be the planetary gear set when it's in drive. And I'm not 100% sure how the lubrication gets to that, but I'll figure it out and we'll go from there. So starting with the ATF pump, on the front end of the automatic transmission, there's always a part of it that spins with the engine. And because of that, they can hook up a pump to it and always have 150 to 200 PSI of pressure. I don't have that luxury because there's a clutch that disengages the entire transmission after the engine. So I need to come up with my own. So I'm going to be figuring out how to attach a 12 volt pump to the external of this and it'll probably be an external motor with an internal pump or like a pump integrated into the side of the housing. I'm trying not to have any external hoses on this. I'm trying to keep it all one block and the machine oil and lubrication passages where I need to. Um, so this is going to be mounted on the side of the transmission somewhere, maybe up high. Up high won't work unless it's self priming and then it could be low. Anyways, um, I'll probably mount it on the side somewhere and that will scavenge the oil out of the bottom of the T case and then basically feed all of it to the control block. And we'll be looking at 150 to 200 PSI there, and then the rest of it's just going to bleed back into the transfer case if the pressure is too high. So as it goes through the main oil passages to the control block, the control block, I have a feeling because I'm not stuck to the way that the transfer case is set up now, the blue and the red lines come out of the bottom of the transfer case. If I rotate it 90 degrees, those passages can come out of the side. And if I can do that on the same side that the ATF pump is on, then the passage from the ATF pump to the control block is very short and I can attach the control block directly to the side of the transfer case and have some external grade valves mounted to the top of it. So that's relatively easy. <laughs> that's all probably within a four inch 
the darn thing's only four inches. That all could be done within about two inches of itself, so that's a very small package that I'll be working on. But the last thing that I need to do is get a hydraulic passage all the way to the front through this manifold and into the front clutch pack. Currently, I want to use this manifold that already is inside the transfer case. Remaking it modified is going to be a little bit of a pain in the butt and then I'd have to find the right bushing to go on the shaft and all that kind of stuff. So trying to use this manifold is important just because I don't want to have to add more engineering work to it. Um, so that's going to be a little bit tricky because the oil passages are going to have to go along the side and then at an angle somewhere and then yeah, it's going to be a little bit tricky. As far as the control block goes, I think there's going to be three valves on it. I might be able to get away with only using two valves on it. One of them will be a two-way valve with a neutral position. That way I can activate it high and that'll be the low gear and then take the power away and that'll be neutral so the planetary frees up and then activate it low and that'll be the low gear. Um, the four-wheel drive is easy, that's just an on and off, so most of the time it'll be off, and then when I need a four-wheel drive, I'll turn it on and it'll energize it. But yeah, I think that kind of wraps up everything for this video. Like I said, this video was going to be quick, I just wanted to go over all the control side of the transfer case that I'll be developing in the background, and if you're wondering what's happened to the transfer case, it's this. This is what I've been working on. Um, I probably won't give a dedicated video until the entire system is fully developed, but every now and then I'll give you a screenshot of what I've developed, the model of the transfer case. The next time I'm working on this is when I 3D print the entire housing and we can kind of give it a physical test fit and see how it works. Um, so that's going to be it for this one. Um, if you liked the video, give me a like. If you haven't subscribed to the channel yet, I would appreciate it if you subscribed. I really do appreciate every one of you. Um, I love watching this channel grow. It makes me so excited when I see more people joining. And I love it when you all comment because I enjoy responding and answering all of your questions. Um, I really am having a lot of fun with this. But that's going to be it. <sighs> You all have a wonderful rest of your day, enjoy your weekend, and I will see you in the next one. Bye guys.